Hey, it's Chris. Today I'm gonna to be checking out the 10th gen iPad. Now this is the base entry level iPad. I got the yellow color. I have all the accessories sitting right here. You know, it says yellow, but it's really a uh, metallic mustard is sort of how I would describe that. This is different. I can't say I don't like it. I mean, I like it. It's nice. It feels modern for a change. It's weird that this is the base entry level iPad because it doesn't look like it anymore. I just gotta point out, this comes with a woven cord now. This is so much nicer. How many non-woven cords have you had fray on you over the years? Now, as you can see here, I've got the cellular option. So I'm not tied down here. If I don't have Wi-Fi with me, I've always got my own LTE connection, potentially, optionally. That's pretty useful on the base entry-level iPad. Now, something to note here is that this is the current design language that matches all the other iPads, the higher-end iPads, meaning it's what Apple calls an all-screen design. It's not all screen, because there's some bezel here. It's mostly screen with some bezel, but it looks really good. So if you're curious, this is a 10.9 inch liquid retina display. Technically, you're gonna have more screen area here than on the previous model. Now, I'll just tell you, I wish that the screen was fully laminated. If you don't know what that means, when it's fully laminated, there's less of a gap between your Apple Pencil and the digital ink, so to speak, when you're writing stuff. It's not a big deal. It's completely usable the way it is, and I'll demo the Apple Pencil in just a second, but that's just one little thing that I wish could have been updated for this particular model. So now that we've got Touch ID right here, which is the same setup that we have on the iPad Air, this is how you're gonna unlock your iPad, this is how you're gonna sign into apps, this is how you're gonna make payments with Apple Pay. I always like to just scan my finger with this setup, number one, of course. But then the other thing I like to do is to scan in my palm, so that if I pick it up this way, I can actually just activate it with my palm. I do this with the Mini too. I personally, as somebody who has tried all the different iPads over the years, prefer Face ID but I'm not gonna complain about Touch ID here. It's very convenient to just reach your finger up and scan it and do whatever you need to do. Now inside this yellow chassis here is the A14 Bionic chip. And Apple's not making a huge deal about the A14 being in here because it's kind of an older chip. And someone's gonna be like, oh, it's an old chip? Well, is that usable? Yeah, it's very usable. I would say this chip is still very killer. Guess what? You can still edit 4K video on the base level entry level iPad. If you've got a big group project that you need to be working on, you're gonna be able to do that. If you wanna play some games, you're definitely gonna be able to do that. Maybe you're a fan of games like Genshin Impact. That's gonna run on here, no problem. Lots of crazy graphics there. It's gonna look good, gonna be nice and performant. So yeah, you're gonna be able to launch apps. They're gonna load nice and quickly, as you can see. Let's say you have an Adobe Lightroom library and you have a bunch of raw photos to scroll through. This thing will eat up those raw photos no problem. But if there's one area where this might be a bit different than the other iPads, I think you might notice that it's gonna be a little different in terms of how many background apps it can keep open while you're working on something else versus something like the Pro. Let's talk a little bit about the cameras. There's a front-facing camera hiding in the bezel right here. It's where everybody who owns an iPad Pro wants that front-facing camera to be located. So this is the first iPad to get that front-facing camera right where people want it in this horizontal landscape mode. So that's very cool. And if you're curious what this 12 megapixel front facing camera is gonna look like, this is what it looks like. So just to give you a demo, let me tell you about my favorite AI writing assistant. It's called Jasper. It will generate some copy for you in no time using artificial intelligence. It'll also generate some AI generated images to go along with that AI generated text. And it's got a browser plugin so you can use it pretty much anywhere. I'm going to link it up down below. It's one of my favorite productivity tools. All right, so you can check it out. But what do you think of the camera quality here? Not too bad. This is a pretty dark room with one big key light going on right here. Now we've also got a 12 megapixel wide camera on the back, which can shoot in 4K. And this is what that looks like. So as you're absorbing the visuals and the audio, so you can see what this is like, let me just mention. We've got some wallpapers, some packs that you can check out if you don't want your iPad to look exactly the same as every other iPad out there. I'm gonna link up those down in the description for you. Also, this is the 12 South Hover Bar Duo. I'll link that up for you down in the description. That's what I was just using to place the iPad up at face height. So yeah, it's a pretty cool accessory. Now, one thing that I'm really liking about this model is that we've got landscape stereo speakers. Now, spatial audio has made its way all the way down to the base level entry level iPad. I personally find that I like spatial audio the best. I enjoy it the most, notice it the most when it comes to watching some entertainment, like a movie or something. It can be really awesome for music as well. Totally depends on who mixed the album and the song and stuff. Some people can do it better than others. So that's why people sometimes say it's hit or miss when it comes to music, but still 
It's an option here. It's better than not having it for sure. Something else that's great here is USB-C. That's right, USB-C. Now, there's some interesting things to talk about with this particular port and the Apple Pencil that comes along with this thing. But look at this, you got two storage options when you go to order, 64 gigs or 256 gigs. What if you wanna expand your storage? That's easy now, you can plug in an external drive. In fact, I'll link one up, one of my favorites down in the description for you. And boom, you just expanded your capabilities. Very easily, USB-C's, it's not Thunderbolt, but it's nice and fast. And I should also mention, you can plug in a display here if you wanted to do that as well. Something else that's pretty cool here is that you're gonna get Wi-Fi 6 support. And you might be like, well, why does that really matter? You know, like having fast Wi-Fi. Hey, have you ever downloaded something like a game, a big game, and you're like, what's taking so long? Well, <laughs> maybe you have gig internet coming into the house. That doesn't really matter. Whatever device that you're using that need, needs to hit the network, you know, it can only go the speed that it can go. And this has Wi-Fi 6. Now the pros have Wi-Fi 6E, so a bit better, but still Wi-Fi 6. That's pretty blazing fast. Honestly, you can't look at this and say that it doesn't look awesome. You know it does. And with these colors too, it's like not just anybody is gonna have these colors. The pro people, they got the button down, you know, professional colors. You can have some fun with these colors here. Okay, let's get to this magic keyboard folio. This thing's, uh, it's kind of an enigma. On the one hand, you just look at it and you're like, that thing is cool. And on the other hand, you're like, this is the cheapest iPad that I can buy. And now I'm gonna end up spending hundreds of dollars to get this really interesting keyboard. Well, that causes you to rethink the whole thing. Should you really be spending this much money on the base entry level setup or should you be springing for something like an iPad Air? Either way though, this is one of the things that as soon as I saw it with the video and the announcement, because there was no event, I was like, oh, I gotta try that. That's one of the coolest things out of all the new iPad lineup. So what's a little bit different here is that it comes in two pieces, right? So it's got this kickstand that's gonna shoot out the back there and boom, you got your setup. Now, this is starting to look like a pretty serious tablet setup, isn't it? And I'm absolutely loving this 14 key function row here because guess what? Even the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard doesn't have a row of function keys. This thing's starting to seem like it's a beautiful beast, isn't it? I will say it's much heavier when you got this keyboard on here because I was just thinking to myself, without the keyboard on here, this thing is light. But yeah, you add that on there and you've added on quite a bit of bulk. It's a Magic Keyboard, so the travel is awesome here. I really like the way this types. I will say though, because of the setup, it doesn't have that levered floaty design that the other Magic Keyboards have. So it's not gonna be as easy to type on in your lap, right? Because it just doesn't prop up well. So that's something to keep in mind. I know a lot of people don't care, but there are people out there who take their iPad and wanna go sit in a chair or on the couch or something. And this isn't a great setup for that. You got this trackpad that by the way, you can click all over. That's a big deal because not every iPad keyboard does that. If you get a cheap iPad keyboard that has a trackpad, they are not all created equal. Some won't let you click up here in the top corners. You can click anywhere here. Got all the gestures. Basically a really amazing, well thought out accessory. Which brings us to the Apple Pencil situation here. Why do I have two things in my hand? Well, number one, I've got an adapter. Why do I have an adapter? Because this is the first gen Apple Pencil and that means a couple things. Number one, it's kind of slippery. I don't really like the way that it feels versus the Gen 2. I prefer the way that the Gen 2 feels in the hand. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is something that you're gonna be able to use. This is how you charge this thing. As absolutely goofy as this is, and it is goofy. Just know that yes, you can use this and it works, okay? If you wanna use this with something like Procreate, for instance, you're obviously gonna be able to do that. On the one hand, some people are giving this setup too much of a hard time. You know, it's not the end of the world. If this is the setup that you're going for and you know, the cost of doing business is using this crazy charging setup here, hey, you can still do your thing with this Apple Pencil, the first gen, even though it's a little bit more slippery and you gotta charge it weird. But look, this has iPad OS 16 on it. That's jam packed with lots of awesome new features. You're gonna be able to edit messages that you just sent, you made a mistake, just like on your iPhone now. You can edit that, you can unsend it. So let's talk about the price. 
The 64 gig model here is gonna run you 449, just for the Wi-Fi version without any extras. So you haven't added an Apple Pencil. You haven't added a Magic Keyboard. If you add an Apple Pencil, and if you add in the little $9 adapter, and if you add in the Magic Keyboard Folio, now you're looking at $806. Just for fun, let's configure an iPad Air here and compare. The grand total there comes out to $1,136.27. Now these are just my first impressions here. I'm gonna end up doing a full review of this thing. So get subscribed if you wanna you know, know what it's like to actually use day in and day out and what you can accomplish here and whether it's worth it, okay? Also, in case you're not aware of it yet, I am working on an Apple-specific productivity course. So if you wanna get notified when that comes out, there's a link down in the description where you can get signed up. There's a newsletter, there's a podcast, there's so much from Daily Tech that you don't wanna miss if you're an Apple fan. So check all those links out down in the description and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.